Hello everyone, Jake here with Unreal RPG Mastery. Welcome to section 2. In this section, we're going to cover creating the base equipment actor, the weapon actor, a pickup actor, character interaction, and different weapon styles. For this lecture, you will need to understand some basic concepts of object-oriented programming. I will briefly cover them so that way everyone can understand what we're doing and why. In object-oriented programming, a parent class is one class, and a child class is another class that inherits all the variables and functions assigned to the parent class. So in the case of our base equipment, we're going to need a base equipable actor class, and inside the base equipable actor class, we're going to need functionality that most equipable items need to inherit. So in the base equipable, we will need equip and unequip functionality, item mesh functionality, and attach functionality. We are also going to create a base weapon actor class, and this base weapon actor class will be a child of the base equipable class, and therefore will inherit all the variables and functions we created in the base equipable class. In the base weapon actor class, we can override the variables and functions created in the base equipable class to create specific functionality for weapons. So for example, you can override equip and unequip functions to give specific functionality to the base weapon. So that way the weapon can call its own version of these functions. Created as child classes of the base weapon class would be different weapons. So, for example, if you're creating a game, there would be a different child class for every weapon item in your game. You can override the parameters for these weapons to make them into different weapons. If some weapon requires modified functionality, you can also override and modify functions as needed for any weapon. So now that we've gone over that, let's go into the engine and start implementing this functionality. So let's create a new folder. We're going to call this folder Actors. Open it up. Okay, now right click and select blueprint class. We need to create an actor and we'll name this one BP underscore base equipable. Okay, open it up. For our base equipable, we will create functionality that most of our equipable actors will need. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some meshes here. I'm gonna add a static mesh. And I'm also going to add a skeletal mesh. I'm gonna call this skeletal mesh item skeletal mesh and call the static mesh item static mesh. Okay, compile and save. Now let's create a function to get the item mesh. Let's create a new function, call this one get item mesh. And inside this function, what we need to do is get the static mesh. From there, we need to get static mesh variable. And we need to check is valid. If it is valid, then we return, we're actually going to return a primitive component. And the reason why we're going to return a primitive component is that this item skeletal mesh and item static mesh are both primitive components. So you can return either one of them in the return value. We're going to call this one return value. And if the static mesh is valid, we just return the static mesh. If it is not a static mesh, that it must be a skeletal mesh. We're going to make this function pure by selecting it and selecting pure. So that way when we call the function, it's going to be a pure function like this. Okay, now we need to create the unequipped and on unequipped functions. And now we'll create a boolean that lets us know if this actor is equipped or not. Call it is equipped and on equipped we'll set it to true. And on unequipped we'll check is equipped true. If it is, we set unequipped to false. And that'll be all we need to do in the base. The main use case for these two functions are for when we override them in child classes, which you'll see later in the course. So whenever we create child classes of this base equipable, we're going to override these functions and add some more functionality to them. For equipable actors, you often need to attach them to a character. So we're going to implement functionality for attaching the actor to a character. Go ahead and create a new function. We'll call this one attach actor. And what we're going to do in this function is we're going to get the owner. And from the owner, we're going to cast a character. And we're going to convert that to a pure cast. And from the character, we're going to get the mesh. We're going to attach actor to component. The parent is going to be mesh. The target is going to be self. And for the location, rotation, and scale rule, we're going to set those to snap to target. OK, and for the socket name, we're going to have that as an input here. And now open up unequipped. And we're going to call attach actor unequip. And we can drag out the socket name and promote that to a variable. 
We'll call this one attach socket name. We'll make this variable public and instance editable. So select that eye icon. We'll make a category for this called initialization. And get item mesh, we'll add a category for that. We'll put this in an item mesh category. And we can put attach actor in there as well. Okay, now let's create the base weapon actor. So let's create a child of the base equipable. We'll call this one BP underscore base weapon. We're going to implement some specific functionality for weapons later, but for now we don't need to implement anything in here. Now let's create a child class of this base weapon, and we'll call this one BP underscore tough sword. Open that up, and we can go ahead and close that and open it again so that way it shows us the data only version. And here under initialization, you can see we can change the attach socket name. We also see that is equipped is visible and we can set that on and off. We actually don't want that. So what we're going to do is go to the base equipable and select the is equipped variable and make that private pile and save. And now when you go back to the tough sword, you'll see that the is equipped variable is gone now. But that also creates another problem where we don't have access to that variable anymore in the base weapon. So we can get is equipped. We no longer have access to that variable. So in order to be able to manipulate this variable, what we're going to need to do is go to base equipable and create a function. And we'll call this function set is equipped. And we'll need to add an input of type boolean and we'll name this boolean is equipped. Okay, now we need to drag out the variable and set is equipped. And we need to create another new function. We'll call this one is equipped. And for this function, we need to add a return value, return a boolean, we'll just call this one return value, and we'll return the is equipped variable. We also need to make this a pure function. Now the reason why I can name this function is equipped and I can name this variable is equipped is because here in the variable name, I put a B is equipped. And this is just something built into the engine that if you put B, it's gonna ignore it here in the name. So you won't see it here in the variable name, but it will be there. So that way you won't have issues if you have a boolean and a function with the same name. So now what we're going to do is open full blueprint editor here for the tough sword. And let's go ahead and add the static mesh for the weapon. We'll add the tough sword mesh. Now select class defaults and we need to override the attach socket name variable. And we can put in the attach socket that we have for our weapon, which we need to go ahead and create that. So go to the base character and open the skeletal mesh and go to a skeleton. And I'm gonna add this one to spawn one. This is going to be his unequipped socket, his normal attached socket when you first attach the weapon, which is going to be attached to his side. And then later we will implement functionality where the character attaches the weapon to his hand. And we'll call this one sword hip attached socket. Okay, now we can right click on the attached socket and add preview asset. We'll add the tough sword. Now we simply need to adjust the weapon to be attached to the character's side. Okay, now that you've done that, we need to copy the socket name. Let's go back to the tough sword and here in the class defaults and details for the attached socket name, we need to paste the sword hip attached socket. Okay, now that you've done that, select to compile and save. Let's go back to the combat character and we need to add a event begin play. And on event begin play, we're going to spawn actor from class. And the class that we need to spawn is tough sword. And the spawn transform, we can do get actor transform and plug that into the spawn transform. We also need to set the owner. So type in self and set self as the owner and also self as the instigator. And what we're doing when we set owner is inside of the actor here, we just call it get owner. Same thing for get instigator. That makes sure that you get the correct value when calling these functions. And after you spawn the actor, we need to call on equipped. Okay, now let's hit play and see what happens. So the character does spawn with a weapon attached to his side. That's exactly what we want. However, we are having issues when the character is walking around. He's sliding around like crazy. And the reason why that's happening is because the weapon still has collision enabled. So to disable that, go to the base equipable, select the item static mesh, and search for collision, and set the collision presets to no collision. Compile and save. And now when we test, we should have no issues. That's it for this lecture. We have now implemented a base equipable actor with functionality implemented that all equipable items will need. We have created a base weapon actor as a child of the base equipable so that our weapons will inherit the functionality of the base equipable. And finally, we have created a weapon item actor that the player can equip and attach. In the next lecture, we're going to implement draw and sheath weapon functionality. See you there.